Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 11th Monday in Ordinary Time. And the church today remembers St. Anthony de Padua, St. Anthony of Padua. And St. Anthony was born in Portugal, but he lived most of his adult life and died in Padua, Italy. He was born in Lisbon, and at the age of 15, he entered the Augustinian religious order and the Order of the Holy Cross at the Abbey of St. Vincent's. Then joined the Franciscans at the age of 19 and made his way to Tuscany and assigned to a convent in the order. In 1222, he was born in 1195. In 1222, he was visiting Dominican friars. He impressed them, even though they were order of preachers. And he inspired them with his preaching and his teaching. He became sick in 1231 and went to a woodland retreat with two other friars for a respite. And there he lived in a room built for him under the branches of a walnut tree. And he did, he became a Franciscan after he met St. Francis of Assisi himself. And so he died in June of 1231 at the Port Clare Man Monastery at Arcella, which is now part of Padua. And he was only 35 years old. So, St. Anthony, for your preaching and teaching, and as the patron saint of lost articles, we ask that you please pray for us today, especially all those souls who have been lost to God, that they may find their way home. So let us begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidier found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you, to do one act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next day. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, you will pardon my guilt, as great as it is. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, lift our hearts to you in new love and dedication and unburden us from the grief and shame of past unfaithfulness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by, next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer. Naboth the Jezreelite had made to him, I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, A fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat, and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. <coughs> so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, having sealed them with his seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. This is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing, though the, through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation, Naboth has cursed God and king. And they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, listen to my groaning. Hearken to my words, O Lord. Attend to my sighing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. Lord, listen to my groaning. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, listen to my groaning. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful the Lord abhors. Lord, listen to my groaning. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Now, Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips, I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. <coughs> but I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, Turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, Hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading is a bit disturbing. We hear about Naboth and King Ahab and how Jezebel, working in Ahab's name, devised a scheme to get Na Naboth's vineyard by basically setting him up and having him stoned to death. And that's how the name Jezebel became such a pariah. And we'll get the continuance of that story tomorrow. But today I'd like to focus on our gospel from St. Matthew. The part of this passage where it says, when str someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. That's been taken in a way over at least my lifetime and probably over the centuries as a basically you know, standing firm in the face of evil and just kind of letting evil do its thing. You get hit once, well, invite him to hit you again. But this, this is deeper, my brothers and sisters. Because what Jesus is telling us to do is not just to lay down and take injustice. No, no. You see, if you're struck on your right cheek, and that's important, in order to strike someone on the right cheek, if you're right-handed, you have to do it with a back hand, right? With a back hand, okay? Because if you're facing someone, your right is their left, okay? So in back in that day, the way slaves were disciplined was slapping them on their right cheek with the back hand. That showed that the person doing the slapping was superior in some way to the one being slapped. Now, if it wasn't equal, you would slap them on their right cheek. So what is Jesus saying with this statement? He's saying that don't let anyone treat you as inferior because we're all made it's in the same image and likeness of God. If they try to do that, make them treat you as an equal. And it does something. Because if someone's a slave, or seen as a slave, or seen as less than another. It's a difference than if you've got an equal. And it's harder to take discipline against your equal, right? So what Jesus is saying is don't just take an insult and escalate it. Make the person insulting you treat you as an equal. That, my brothers and sisters, is strength. Jesus is telling us to be strong. Not just to avoid conflict. Not just to lay down and take something. But to force the other to treat you as an equal. And then the same thing. If someone wants to go with to the law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. So anyone press you into service for one mile, go two miles. What he's saying is, if someone's trying to treat you as an inferior, don't let them do that. Make them treat you as an equal. Because if you, if they tell you that they want your tunic, if they want your shirt, give them your coat. Because that will say, my brother, here, take what you need. Or, if you have to carry, they're forcing you to carry something for them for a mile. Tell them, hey, my brother, let me help you. Take them to, from superior and inferior to equal. Brother, sister. My brothers and sisters, this is how we should treat each other. We should never treat, our, treat someone else as inferior to us nor should we stand for being treated as inferior to someone else who is made in God's image and likeness. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. For the military or private, they're a captain. You got that difference. But humanly, the same in God's eyes. So let's take a lesson 
from today's gospel and in humility take charge of our humanity, our manliness, our womanliness, our masculinity or our femininity, depending on what, what it is. And if someone, anyone, tries to treat you as inferior, stand your ground and make them see you as an equal. Because by doing that, not only will we calm down a lot of situations, but we will assert our God-given dignity we have been endowed with as children of God, made in God's image and likeness. And we owe it to our God to, tr to be demand to be treated as one of his creatures. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We call upon our triune God to hear our prayers and to respond to our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be ever more effective to proclaim Christ, who leads all to the Father and the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that their love for the truth may increase, so that our world may grow in peace and justice, and we may treat each other as equals in the image and likeness of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who yearn to be parents, that God will hear their desire and bless them with the gift of life, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that they be given the grace needed to reflect on the Trinity's communion of love and that they be brought back into that communion of love if they have strayed, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and the suffering, especially those in our parish prayer list, that God will heal their bodies, minds, and spirits and restore them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intention we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and those who will die today, that they may now live in perfect union with the Most Holy Trinity, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you will that all people sharing your triune life hear these, prayer, th hear these our prayers that we might one day enjoy everlasting life with you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in union with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I will accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Almighty, ever-living God, through the death of your Son, you made forgiveness possible for all people. Accept this offering of praise and thanksgiving, for it is placed before you with our greatest love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The holy sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 5, which is found on page 92 if you are following along. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup in the same way he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer the sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, holy will abroad and all the saints, and St. Anthony de Padua as well, together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. Through your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now 
and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, pui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let us say together the second communion prayer found on page 98 if you're following along. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. Embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. They acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, may the Eucharist we have received cleanse us of sin and free us from guilt. For our sins bring us sorrow, but your promise of salvation brings us joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. We are safe God against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's join me now in a prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. 
Where there's darkness, light, and where there's sadness, joy. Oh, divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. I pray you can join us tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time for our daily Mass. Thursday, we will be celebrating the Solemnity of Corpus Christi, and on Sunday, we will be celebrating this Sunday within the octave of Corpus Christi, again at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We pray that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Always remain in a state of grace and fight evil whenever and wherever you find it. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the world. <laughs>